Okay, so welcome, Mary Christine. This is telling us that we are live. So let me just check here. Yeah. Turn the sound down. So welcome, everybody, to this chat this evening. I'd like to, um, my wish is to introduce you to, to Mary Christine this evening. Mary Christine is a high priestess of the new earth and a medicine woman. So I love that you look, and you really, you you look the part totally to me. So very big welcome to you. Um, thank you for being willing to share with me and to share with the people that listen to this. Would you tell everybody a little bit about you? Yeah, well, hi everybody. And thanks Sarah for the opportunity to share. Um, so, I uh, I smiled at the medicine woman because it's always a, <laughs> a tricky one to call out. Um, I work in the corporate world and I bring that medicine woman person and bag of tools into the world that's so uh, in need in a way, yeah. um, just by being who you are. And outside of that, um, I'm a Feng Shui practitioner. I'm an advanced flower essence and vibrational essence practitioner. I did a lot of shamanic studies, uh, energy work, ancestral healing. So there's loads of tools in that bag uh, available to help. Uh, and I actually am um, kind of finishing a coaching course as well. So that will add to that bag. Quite a, a different arrows in the bag. Lovely. And I love, I love, I mean, because one of the first, one of the things that we always say about priestesses, modern day priestesses, it could be anybody, you know, that can be a woman at home taking care of her children. It can be a woman whose children have flown the nest. It could be somebody like me whose soul has decided to create in a different way. Mm -hmm. Very often priestesses are literally walking the rooms of the corporate world. Yeah. So very, very needed. So yeah, I think it's really important to acknowledge that there's no, there's no, you know, flowing dress temple. I mean, my goodness, I wish there were. So um, we have some people watching live. So do please say hello so that Mary, Mary Christine can come and have a chat with you afterwards. So um, what called you to following the path of the priestess? Hmm. So, I mean, years ago, I did the flower essence uh, diploma, and that was really a kind of a, yeah, we're just doing it. And I think it was a year after, a couple of months, it was quite soon after I finished that you actually started uh, the Star Gaia process. And it was like, and at the time, it was like, oh, that looks interesting, but I'm not ready. And it was a real kind of not there's other things you need to do and um and I've been you know following um doing parts of programs that you've been running and or shorter ones and when in 2021 when it was advertised again I was like you know what now that feels right mm -hmm. and that's where I joined so it was really that kind of listening to the inner call of mm -hmm. when was the right time to start on that journey mm -hmm. it is a calling isn't it mm -hmm. timing of the calling obviously is very individual and it's really important to listen to that voice but it is just something we know we know we want to do it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what do you think it was is well as I'm talking, you know, and we talked uh, just before we joined is uh, actually when you mentioned that at the beginning, you didn't have the crystalline grade piece. I wonder now that it's part of it, was there that element that I didn't know yeah. was now part of yeah. that somehow um, led me to yeah. that call? I, I don't know. I'm just trying to see what yeah. could be the differences, you know. Yeah, because as we were chatting before we started, when I first started um, right now, it's January 2023 as we're speaking, and there's a sixth journey about to start, a sixth priestess process. I can't believe I'm saying that, actually. But it's <laughs> the sixth 
one. Um, but when I first started it, I wasn't, you know, the crystalline consciousness wasn't something that was known to me. So, um, yeah, so it's becoming more and more part of it. And I know that you know what that feels like. So mm. maybe we'll have a little chat about that as we're going through. So, so there was a strong calling. The timing of it was really important to you. Um, so something that you shared with me uh, yesterday, actually, it was actually because you're now doing the high priestess process. Yes. And you shared with the rest of us in the high priestess group that you felt that your priestess journey, because that's a nine month journey in itself, and the high priestess journey is the next stage for anybody that's mm -hmm. called, which is also nine months. You said that your first priestess journey had been instrumental to achieve a level of calm about being visible as me. Yeah. So you had no idea I was going to pick up on that. I'm no. talking about it tonight. You just shared it. And I was like, oh, because I hear this again and again as a theme. Very mm -hmm. I'm just starting to see how common it is. So can you talk to us a little bit about how you didn't feel safe to be visible as this medicine woman? And now here we are on public social media and you're talking. So what's happened? What's changed? <clears throat> um, I think if you go back to what I mentioned, I work in the corporate world and it's a very different world. And um, and then society in general, you know, it, is it safe to actually speak about things that are not uh, necessarily mainstream? Even though, I mean, if we if you look around, it's more and more mainstream. There's a lot of things that are being publicly talked about. Mm -hmm. um, but there was that resistance of, you know, nearly like a. a, a a kind of a division you have Marie here and you have Marie there and they kind of interlink but not too much you know so you know which part needs to be visible when and how visible and the visibility came more from a, an actual practice and a practitioner point of view um it's fine to do all those courses for me and to grow and to share every now and then with people. But I always resisted the, <clears throat> oh yeah, like people had come to me for consultations and they were like, but can I advertise you? Can I refer? And I was like, no, 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 I'm not ready. No, 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 don't do that. <laughs> I don't know yet. And uh, so going through the priestess process, definitely when we looked into the shamanic astrology, and starting looking at natal charts in a slightly different way than maybe all the type of astrologies look at the at the natal chart brought that kind of oh actually it's not forget about your sun or your ascendant but here are two other planets you should really focus on which are your venus and your mars and and suddenly there was that realization of the mars your sacred um, or your divine masculine being in my Virgo, which is all about structure, organization, you know, the earth, even though Virgo is the priestess kind of sign, but it suddenly was like, yeah, I love that. I love organizing and having things in order. And, um, and that was nearly becoming my way of getting stuck here. It's safe. I'm here in my container. That's it. And, and then I have uh, Pisces, uh, my Venus is in Pisces, which is all about the flow. And, and suddenly I was like, whoa, um, yeah, but I, I go there, but not in public, you know, let's not go there. And suddenly doing, there's a, a process we do during the, the process, the priestess process, which is that sacred union of the two. And I'll always remember the image that came, which was um, that priestess with water flowing but the flow, the flow was contained within a circular container. And suddenly it was that, that Mars or Virgo was here kind of containing yeah. and supporting the divine feminine. And I think that in-depth understanding 
allow some part of me to say, it is safe. Yeah. You are supported. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's the only thing I can think of, you know, like, and then we did a lot of clearing uh, using the crystalline grades, but I think that piece really unlocked something. Yeah. And it is difficult to, to be kind of tangible about it, <clears throat> particularly in, in the early stages. So what I'm hearing is, and is what I see a lot, I think, is that your feminine energy started to feel safe because for most of us, especially women like you and I that have kind of worked, you know, I used to work as a teacher. We were kind of like more out in the public domain. We've grown up in a world that's, that, you know, respects and appreciate women who do the hard work mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with doing that hard work but when we ignore our feminine when that is kind of like sidelined which is often the case and it's kind of what we're talking about here so it sounds as if your feminine has come back in that central place and now she's kind of doing all what she always did but she's doing it from a more embodied space mm -hmm. yeah for you mm. so it is interesting that I see a lot of people who come through the priestess process all of a sudden feeling safer in their lives feeling safer to be visible um and yeah and that obviously radiates radiates out into the whole of your life so thank you for sharing that it's it is the shamanic astrology is very powerful it's certainly uh, helped me massively with my own understanding of myself so the priestess process is a nine-month journey you're still in your actually um you're still processing those energies aren't you because we do that for a year and a day but you also jumped into the high priestess process because you you listened um what was it about the high priestess process that called you forward do you do you know that yet? I have no idea, Sarah. It just felt. Um, I know for some people it was like, oh, I, I want to still be part of the community. I want to. For me, it was more. I just need to carry on. Yeah, yeah. And I and I, I've learned to accept the not knowing and just really trusting your gut mm -hmm. and going with it and and being in the cloud until it becomes clearer. Um, but that was I'd love to give an answer or a clear response but it was just like mm -hmm. you know you're you're just you're just carrying on and, and that's it yeah I guess it's it's a continuation of the grounding and the anchoring in isn't it it's like um just taking it to the next level keeping you focused and clear and on your path mm -mm. what have you what have your favorite parts been of the priestess process I mean, it's it's great to be with a, a community. You know, you have other women who are going through the process, and and even though um, I wasn't able to join live most of the time because it was during the day and I had my job, so I couldn't just take the time. Uh, but listening to the replay felt like you were there anyway, so there was no difference. In, uh, and, and maybe for those listening who would be interested, like it, it really didn't make a difference not being there live. It, it actually worked by listening to the replays, but you need to be present though. Uh, I know you mentioned in some of um, the short courses, you know, don't multitask, don't be listening halfway through the replay and do something else. So if you really are present to the replay, it's, it's the same the only difference is you can't just interact with the individuals uh, live but then you have that Facebook group which you know people participated in and, and kind of shared so that was just nice um, and I I liked you know the different way of looking at the elements and the directions which I would have been familiar in a different way so it just added a, a different length uh, or flavor to the directions and the elements mm. uh, but my favorite has been really the, the shamanic astrology I think I think there's more to explore still and maybe that's the calling to the high priestess because it, it's like there's a different level that is still 
to be unfolded. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think there always is, isn't it? It's part of the excitement of taking these journeys. There certainly it is for me to always learning, always unfolding. Yeah. Mm. So if you could, I know this is probably like a really difficult question, but I'll ask anyway, because it's in my head. If you could say in a sentence or two how the priestess process has helped you move forward with your life, what would you say? Hmm. I've sprung that one on you, haven't I? I didn't tell you I was going to ask you that. <laughs> um, it, it has it kicked me to be more visible mm. and made it so strong that if I resisted, I wasn't feeling great. Uh, it led me to, I mean, in, in October, launching my first ever wheel, which I call the spiral of the season. And, and, um, and I was so freaking out. It was like, oh my God, you're actually doing this. And, um, and having one person joining and I was like, oh my God, you're doing and it. having the doubts of like, oh, only one, come on. And, and then suddenly it's like, hold on people someone actually joined so even just that I don't think would have been feasible or would have even happened if I hadn't gone through some level of process mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um yeah yeah, I mean, I've watched you. I know we've done some crystalline grid personal one-to-one -one work as well. So but I've watched you just get visible and get visible and get visible. And it's been pretty fast, really, mm -hmm. but comfortable. You know, I, I've not seen any masculine forcing or hustling. You just like, just a little bit like you're saying, it's time. Yeah. It's opening. So I'm going to open with it. So you've been, you've inspired me. And I've loved watching your journey and I will continue love watching how this moves forward for you because I have no doubt it will move forward very powerfully in its own timing. So thank you very much for joining me, Marie. Um, it's You're lovely welcome. to allow everybody to meet you. Um, is there anything else that you would like to share? Well, I think it's more like for anybody called to do it is to really um, not go too much in their heads. Uh, and just is it is it for you and is it the right time mm -hmm. but it has to come from the heart and the gut and and not feel um oh i'm gonna miss out it has to come from i really want to do it there's something telling me i should do it yeah i understand that that's what happened for me mm. hey so uh, for those of you watching, um, we will pop Marie Christine's details where you can go and find her up. Do you just want to tell everybody quickly how they could get in touch with you should they have wanted to find out more about you? I don't have a website yet. <laughs> uh, I'm still doing baby steps, but uh, I have a Facebook page called Spiraling into the Heart. And uh, that's where I post whatever I do and anything I want to share. If people want to follow that page. Um, that's the best way really uh, to follow or message me through that page and uh, for the time being hopefully with time we expand absolutely but they can you know what the web internet you can just pop your name into the google search and you will appear some way that's the way the world works isn't yeah. it? yeah so thank you so much those people watching please do share Say hello to Marie and let her know what you've enjoyed about her sharing and how it's helped you, because it helps us as well to get that feedback. So thank you so much. I've very much enjoyed introducing you to people. And thank you for sharing about the priestess process. Thanks a million, Sarah. Thanks, everybody, for watching.